welcome to Adult Arts and Crafts from the Warren County Library. I'm Mary Ellen and today I'm going to show you how to mask watercolors using rubber cement. This is a fun little tip to try and I hope you've been working on your watercolors and practicing and trying new things and here's a new little thing to try today. So I'm going to first mention that um, I have found that it's really helpful to do a little bit of crafting every day. I think it's good for your spirit. It's good for your mind. I have been trying a little bit of uh, following a meditation group on Facebook and I have found that stopping and focusing on a craft for five or ten minutes is just like a meditation. So if you didn't want to get into that whole regalia and you want to try to calm down and relax and clear your mind, try a little crafting. Set up a spot. I've set up a little table that I can go to and not have to move everything away in order to do some watercolors or make a little craft and make it comfortable for yourself. So I hope you get a chance to try uh, this technique because it's really fun. So. I'm going to show you some examples of things that are done masked with rubber cement and then I'm going to walk through uh, a whole set of instructions step by step and show you how to make a painting using this technique. So let's go down, take a look inside the box here and see what I'm talking about. So on Pinterest this is a picture that I found of something that someone made using rubber cement on their watercolor and all they did was dribble it on. So it's basically a doodle of rubber cement that they just dribbled on and then came back and painted an abstract painting, removed the rubber cement, which you do by just rubbing it off or erasing it with an eraser, they ended up with this finished product. I think that's really interesting. I haven't tried one of those yet, but it's an idea of something that you could do simply. Something you might try is using a stencil and painting your rubber cement inside the stencil, removing it, painting your watercolor, and then rubbing off the rubber cement, and it's going to leave this white space. You know, the reason we want to do masking in the first place is because Sometimes you really want some white space on your watercolor and the hardest thing to do is to avoid that white space with paint. So what you end up doing is going back later and trying to add some paint and it never looks quite as good as the color of the paper initially did. You might try a word that's masked. I just used the brush inside and tried writing a word quickly, throwing some paint over it. Now know that there are pens that you can buy with masking material in them. So if you really get into this and you get an idea of a word that you'd like to do that you'd like to leave white and paint around it, that might be something that you would be interested in trying. One that I saw on Pinterest that I really liked was this picture where they used sheet music. They masked the shape of this butterfly and then they came back and painted in the color around it and then rubbed off the masking materials to show the sheet music through. Something that you might not notice on first look is that after they removed the masking material, you then could come back and paint in some areas that had been masked because it leaves the paper underneath pristine just as it was when you started. So I have an example of how you would do this. What I did here was I uh, traced half of a, a butterfly shape and cut it out. So now I have the whole shape and I could take this right down to my watercolor paper. And first let me mention, if I'm using a lot of watercolor on the paper, I do tape that paper down onto a piece of cardboard first. So if I have that taped down, I would take this stencil that I made and I could take my rubber cement and what I'm using here is just regular old Elmer's and what I could do is just paint it lightly 
inside that shape. So I think what I might do is actually do that a little bit so you can see what it looks like. The rubber cement is quite messy and gloppy. So what you probably want to do is not load up your brush too much. I'm just going to place this and I think I'll put a little piece of tape here to hold it down so it doesn't move. Just so you get the gist of what it looks like while you're painting it. So I would paint it inside my stencil like this. And it's, it's um, fairly light in coating, but what I'd like to do is do two coats. So get some more on my brush. And you can see where you've gone because it's shiny when you put it on. It kind of looks like, like it was nail polish. So you see that it's not difficult to paint on. It does smell a bit. And I would let this dry and I would do a second coat because you want to make sure that it's really sealed up because then you would just paint directly around it and you could paint right over it because it won't bleed through. After you do your painting, this is what it would look like. The uh, masking material on this half has been removed and this half it hasn't. So if you can see, I can take my hand now, my finger, and I can just roll this material away. And another way to do it is to use an eraser and a white eraser or a rubber eraser and just rub that away and what's left underneath will be clear white. You see those little bits? You can just rub them off with your finger and you'll be left with this white shape underneath. So here's one that I made the other day and I used the quote, the moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. Ain't it the truth? What I did here was I drew a circle and then I came back with my masking material, my rubber cement, and I covered that up with the rubber cement. Thank you. And then I could come back with very dark paint and just paint right over it. As I paint right over it, that area is fully protected by the masking material. I see I have a couple of people who have entered the room. I just want to mention that masking material is available in the art store. A bottle like this is about $17. If you want to just try it for fun, you might want to try something like rubber cement. This is about a $3 bottle and you might have it at home already. So what I had done there is I have filled in that circle with rubber cement and then I was able to paint all of this paint right over it and then I was able to just roll it right off with my hand or with an eraser. So what I think we are going to make today, I'll show you all the steps to make this cute little painting of dandelions. I've made a few of these. I really, really love the idea of doing a dandelion because when you make this for a card or a gift, you are giving them their wishes because you can say, make a wish, best wishes, my wishes are with you, whatever you'd like to say. But the, the nice thing about the dandelion shape is it's a little bit simple to draw. It's very pretty and it it gives you all the wishes that you want. So we're gonna do this and I'll show you step by step how to make you this. So the first time I saw a painting like this uh, was on Pinterest and it is on artprojectsforkids.org. Now, if you're looking to learn something, a great place to go are sites like this because this is something that's going to teach a child how to do it. We're just kids too, aren't we? So that's what I did. I went there, I looked at a picture that was very much like this, and I made this one. So it has a little bit of a folk art look to it, 
and I just thought it was adorable. So you can see that I took that design and I've changed it up a little bit as many other people have on Pinterest. And so you can see that it's something that's really very available. If you go to Pinterest and type in dandelion, you're gonna find lots of them. So if you wanted to draw your very own dandelion, this is how I did mine. I came up with the idea that the dandelion is just built inside of a circle. So I found a cap, a drawer of something that was the size that I thought was a good size for the bigger one. And then I made a smaller one and I used a spool of thread. So you can do whatever works for you, but I was looking at a picture where there were two and I thought, well, I'd like to make them a little bit different size than each other. I think that's attractive. So I drew a pencil line around this one, a pencil line around this one. And this is how I created the dandelion that's there. So in the center of the one circle of the first circle, I'll just make one right here so you can see. I used my Pigma pen because this pen is um, water safe. It's a permanent pen. So it's not going to run when it gets wet with the watercolor. That's very important. So let me tell you, it's a Pig Pigma. I've used this before in my classes. Pigma Micron pen. It's archival ink and it's a very reasonable pen to get from Michael or Hobby Lobby. Didn't do a good job drawing that circle, but that's all right. That's how I start. And so then I start just making some arcs around the circle. It helps me to turn the paper. So say I do some arcs that come out almost all the way to the outside of my circle. I turn it, turn it, turn it. That kind of helps me make a straighter line. So do what works for you. That certainly works for me. Then what you might wanna do is come in with some shorter ones. So it just adds some interest to add some that are a different length. I can put a little one in the middle there, a one that's a little bit longer. And as you build it, if it's not perfectly even, it's fine because it doesn't have to be perfectly even. It's just such a fun little design to do. As you, as you continue to put things, lines in here, you just keep moving it around and around. So I think I, you get the gist of what I'm doing there. After you have your lines in, you can draw the little end of little C pods that are there. And I was looking at other ones that uh, were done and I did different ones in different ways. In this one, I can see I did a little horseshoe shape like that. And then I did another horseshoe shape inside of it. So then you can go around to each of your little lines and put that side, that little horseshoe, I'm calling a horseshoe shape, I don't know what else to call it. Put that little shape inside. And do you see as you continue around, it's a simple repeated action. And again, this is what I'm talking about, meditation. When you start doing a repeated action it's really good for your brain. It takes you to a place where all of your, uh, the things that you're worrying about can really just uh, go to the background and you can focus just on this. In order to make the stem and do that simply, I would take a straight edge and I'd just grab a ruler here and you just want the slightest bit of an arc. So I'm drawing the one line and now I'm just gonna turn it to the side, you see just a little bit, and come back and fill it in. You could fill it in really solidly if you like. You could leave it a little less solid if you like that. But do you see that, you know, we're, we're getting closer and closer to this finished product. Now, in order to make that edge look a little frillier, something that I started doing was putting little dots. So here's some little dots. You see it starts as you add a little something more and a little something more. It starts to look like the finished product. And it's really, really quite simple. 
So let's, I, I had a few here flying out because the wind came by and this is sharing some wishes with somebody else when we do that, right? So here's the ones that I had finished. I wanna show you what it looks like when I apply the paint directly to this. These have the, uh, oh, I'm gonna put the uh, rubber cement on here first. You can see me putting it on. And then I will put some paint on here so you can see how the resist actually works. So I'm going back to my Elmer's rubber cement. And again, you see it's very, very gloppy stuff. It's kind of messy stuff, but it comes with this nice brush inside. So you don't have to touch it. I'm not gonna put it on this one yet because I haven't finished drawing that one. But this one is drawn. And if I don't want any color to reach those little frilly seeds, I've got to come around and, and just put this rubber cement right over it. It kind of has an unpleasant smell. So I might suggest that you have an, do this in a place where you can put the fan on. If a smell is bothersome to you, it dissipates very quickly. So it's not really a problem, but I wanna make sure I get this all around the outside. I can barely see the shape that I had penciled on there, but I just want this to be a nice shape because this can be a nice greeting card for someone when it's done. So at that point, this needs to dry. So this is why I have a second one right here so I can paint directly. But that one's ready to go. That has plenty of rubber cement on it because this, was, this came out a little bit thick. But if you put it on at a very thin amount, you want to do a second coat because you don't want any bleed through. So let me get my paints. And I think I've got some water here. I've got some paints here. And I'll pull it right here so hopefully you can see everything that I am doing. All right. I have taped this down nicely to a hard, a hard piece of cardboard. It's actually the back of a book that was being discarded. Again, using discarded things. And what I like to do is I like to paint the sky area with water first just to moisten it up and it will help the colors be thinner on the paper. So I'm actually, I'm gonna paint the whole thing with water first. Now if you have, this is a watercolor paper, 140 pound cold pressed. I've talked about papers before. It's a good paper, but it's not a really expensive paper. If you had a really expensive paper, this would really be the way to go because it really leads perfectly onto expensive paper. This paper's all right, but it's not really that expensive. I'm going to put my card here for myself to see how do I want it to look. And all right, I've got some blue here. Do you notice that I left my palette dry from the last time I was painting. That's because that paint is just as good today as it was the day I left it. All it needed was a little bit of water. So do you see that I'm energizing the paint that was already there and I can add more paint to it. Add some green in there. I can add some of this, this blue green over here for the grass. I can add some more blue to this. So do you see that if you leave your paint in the palette, because you're gonna use that color again, it's going to be available to you next time. I think that was worth mentioning. So let's just take some blue and we'll start doing our sky. Now, I'm just gonna go do a little bit at a time because then I can always build it up, right? If I go whole hog first, it's hard to undo. I add a little shit, different shade of blue. Let's see, a little bit of that shade over here. Maybe just wet. I think I want a little bit of this green. 
as the grass. And I think I'll just leave that. Maybe it'll bleed up a little bit. And then a little bit darker green. A little too wet. So a little bit, a little bit less water. A little bit darker green under here. Let's see. Maybe I'll try. Okay, that's the very yellow green. This one's a little bit darker. And do you see how simple it is to do a picture like this? It does not require much. It just needs a little free action. And it's always kind of nice, even in here, to leave a little bit of uh, white where we haven't painted anything. Now, of course, you want these white these white dandelions to show. And the only way they're going to show that they're white is to put some contrasting color around it. So I am adding a little bit. Let's try a little more of this color blue. Maybe mix this blue with this blue and see what color that comes out. A little bit darker than I wanted. So I can actually grab some of it up. Maybe I'll put some of that blue up here. So as you see how fun this is, because it's basically play. And you can see that this rubber cement on here has resisted the water as well as the color that's there. Now, in order to remove it, you really, really want to dry it. So I have a, a little heat gun here that you can use for drying. And you can see this paper is very, very saturated. So you can kind of get the look of what the finished product is going to be. But I am hesitant to remove this rubber cement until it is totally, totally dry, all right? So I can dry that further with the heat gun, but I think I wanna leave it alone. I want to dry it, let it be completely dry before I rub that rubber cement off of there. So we will come out with a picture. It's very, very close to this one. It just depends where I drop the color and how I decided to end my little frilly seeds on the outside of my dandelions. So I hope that you uh, followed along and saw how fun this could be. It's really, really quite simple to do, and I had a lot of fun doing it. I do want to try one with lettering as well. So I hope that um, you guys are waiting for the library to come back into business. I want you to know, let me bring my camera back up. I want you to know that we are working very hard inside the library to get our reservation software ready. Once that is set, probably next week at some time, you'll be able to make a reservation for when you'd like to come in and pick up your holes. So think about things you want to check out. Visit warrenlib.org. Read the directions for how to sign up for summer reading. You can do that today. Um, and soon enough, you'll be able to sign up to make a reservation. You can tell us exactly what time. You can just choose a time and say 2 o'clock on a Tuesday. Not Thursday, because you want to be here. But you can stop in. We will have your materials bagged up with a slip on it that you can walk up to the front of the building to the table and pick it up and take it home. It will be checked out to you when you make that reservation. So I know that's news that lots of people are waiting for. We don't know exactly which day it's going to be done, but know that we are in the building. We are working hard to make this happen for you, and we know that you're really excited about it. So think about stopping in here next week on Thursday at 2 o'clock. I'm going to do pressing flowers in the microwave. This is the fast way to press flowers. We know we can put them in a book and wait a few weeks, but I'll show you how you can start the process in your microwave and have pressed flowers even in one day if you want. So stop in next time. 
Thanks for coming. I really appreciate the views and visit us on YouTube. Thanks so much. Have a good day.